Aurora Storialis and the Three Little Pigs. There once was a girl called Aurora Storialis. She was a bit of an adventure girl, and she lived high up in a tree. There were ropes and pulleys and trapdoors and bouncy high branches. There was a sleeping platform on a high branch, and every night she'd nestle in there with her soft toys and tell them adventure stories of near misses and epic quests. Her favourite story was a real-life story that actually happened to her. Well, it was mostly about her buddies, the three little pigs, but she just happened to get caught up in the story, which is no surprise because she was, after all, a bona fide adventure girl. Her best buddies were a band of brothers. They were three little pigs. She loved having them over to play in her treehouse. They loved climbing up and zooming down. Whee! She'd belay them up again with her carabiners and ropes to the sleeping platform and they would sit around playing paper, scissors, rocks, pin the tail on the wolf, charades, share secrets, whisper jokes and do Chinese whispers. They wondered if it was a little racist to call them Chinese whispers but no one had come up with a better name yet. Hmm, what about soupy whispers, said Aurora. Our whisperings are all jumbled up like the veggies and barleys and alphabets in a soup. Yes, it cheered the pigs. That's a great name. And so forevermore, the foursome called them by their more proper, less racist and infinitely more descriptive name, Soupy Whispers. There were often birdies perched on the branches all around Aurora's platform. They chirped and chirped away happily and helped the gang keep tally of who won which game. And they were always a little interested to see if anyone fell. But one day, the birdies came bursting with news that a wolf had been seen prowling hungrily around. Aurora called a neighbourhood watch meeting for all the local creatures. Most of the creatures in the forest had found homes high above the ground safe from the wolf. They agreed that the piggies were most at risk from the wolf because they lived on the ground. They usually slept nestled in piles of leaves or splayed out in the long grass or collapsed exhausted atop a mossy mound after spending the entire day horsing, well, pigging, around. They were indeed a prime target. The committee of forest friends, owls and bugs and birds and mice and aurora and her three buddies, pig one, pig two and pig three, spent the afternoon coming up with housing ideas. They wanted to use materials they could find abundantly nearby. See, this would be super useful in case they needed to patch up the house or wanted to expand their little house as their family grew. I know, I know, said the mouse excitedly. By the edge of the forest is a beautiful grassy field. We could collect the grass in great bundles, make bales from it and build a beautiful little dwelling. Hoo, hoo, yes, tiny houses are all the rage, said the owl. Brilliant, said Aurora, and the whole committee set off for the field. They spent all afternoon making bales. They'd never made bales before. It was hard. They had to cut the grass, collect the grass, tie bundles, stack the bundles, truss them together, drag them along. <sighs> they got better at it but as the day went on, but the house they were able to build together in a day from straw was a little less marvellous than they'd hoped for. There were four walls, a window and a door, but it was very open plan. The kitchen doubled, well tripled, as the bedroom and the lounge, but the piggies were chuffed. It was their first real home. They celebrated their friends in their new pad with mugs of steaming chamomile tea and berry sandwiches as the sun set. Exhausted after their huge day of construction, the pigs whispered to Aurora, Sleep over? Yes, please, said Aurora excitedly under her breath. So the gang bid a grateful farewell and dispatched their forest friends, and the four collapsed in a heap on the soft grassy floor and quickly fell asleep. They woke the next morning to the delicious smell of cut grass being warmed by the rising sun. They stretched and yawned and sneezed and scratched. And then Aurora leapt up and said, Who's for pancakes? The piggies chimed in unison, Me! And so Aurora got to work. Before long, she set a massive stack of steaming pancakes on the table and the piggies joined hands with her and sang a somewhat tuneful... 
Thank you for the lovely food you made before tucking in like pigs. But they were no more than one or two pancakes into their morning feast when they were startled by a feisty knock on the door. Little pigs, little pigs, let me in. Eek! It was the wolf. Not by the hair of our chinny chin chins, the, big, the pigs chimed together bravely. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, he said. Rather too confidently, Aurora thought. The pigs looked at Aurora, searching her face for answers. She shrugged. What could they do? They sat and watched and listened as the wolf huffed and puffed and huffed and puffed. And then, to their dismay, the badly made pails started to lift and fly away. It wasn't looking good for the fab foursome. Aurora grabbed the survival kit. They each grabbed a pancake, climbed out through the back window and ran into the forest. The wolf was so absorbed in his task, puffering and huffering, that he didn't notice them running like Billio for the forest. Aurora hoisted her buddies up into the treehouse one by one. <sighs> well, that was scary, she said, but don't worry, my lovely little pink friends. You can stay here until we can think of a pan plan B. <coughs> Once again, they brainstormed about how to build a house that could keep out the nasty wolf. Clearly it needs to be stronger, said Pig Two. And we, could, we should need to find some lots of building materials very close by, said Pig Three. The four of them gazed out into the forest deep in thought. A twig snapped under the weight of a fat old owl and it fell to the forest floor below. <gasps> Aha, said Aurora, twigs and sticks. Look, we have as many as we could ever need. They looked around the forest floor, strewn with wooden limbs of various sizes. They started making bundles straight away. Then they dragged them into a clearing in the forest. Aurora asked the fat old owl to keep a lookout for the meanie wolf. They beavered away busily for hours, carefully creating a frame with the longest and largest sticks, then filling in the gaps with little bundles of sticks entwined with vines. The roof they made with flowering epiphytes, so their hair ceiling hung with beautiful flowers and orchids and smelt heavenly. It was absolutely gorgeous. All the creatures of the forest gathered around and nodded and chirped in agreement. It was the finest little dwelling they had ever seen. The community had an impromptu party to celebrate the making of this fine little piggy abode. The birds walked bunting, the bees made honey on toast and the owls bought a berrylicious smoothie. The bugs bought their instruments and before long everyone was whooping and reeling and clapping and dancing around the clearing as the sun set in the sky. An uninvited guest lurked at the fringes of the gathering. Next morning the sun's rays pierced through the gaps in the sticks and woke the piggies. Aurora had been up for a while making a new batch of pancakes. The piggies came into the kitchen rubbing their eyes. She served up a huge stack of steaming pancakes. They all sat around holding hands. They praised the cook in song form before launching into a pancake eating frenzy. Again, they were interrupted by a knock. Oh, I don't believe it, said Aurora, exasperated. Little pigs, little pigs, let me come in. It was the naughty wolf again. Not by the hair of our chinny chin chins, the pigs chimed together. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, he said. There's no way he could blow down this beautiful shack, was there? The pig got down to the business of huffering and puffering and at first the piggies taunted him. You're dreaming, mate. They crossed their arms in satisfaction as the wolf seemed to run out of steam. But then he came at the house again with a renewed vigour, huffing and puffing and the twigs started to lift. The lovely vines loosened and the epiphytes went flying with the breeze. <gasps> Unbelievable, said Aurora, grabbing the survival kit and gesturing to the piggies to flee. They escaped through the back window and again the wolf was none the wiser. They ran off back to the tree hut. The awesome foursome were feeling pretty upset by the ordeal. 
They held hands in a circle on Aurora's sleeping platform and sobbed and shook. The birds twittered gently around them supportively. Finally, they collapsed in a heap from all the hysteria and crying and slept for a whole day. The next day, they felt a bit better. Aurora said that in the night, she had an idea. There was some lovely red clay down by the river. It was a beautiful day. So come on, let's build a lovely house of bricks down by the river. They set off for the river nervously looking over their shoulder for the furry fiend that was dead set on digesting them, but the beast was exhausted from his mighty huff and puff and was still catching, catching up on his sleep in his hole in the hill. Aurora created a little assembly line for the bricks. They made boxing to keep the brick shape and made a huge hot fire to fix them. By the end of the day, they had a huge stack of beautiful red bricks, each marked 3 times P plus A. The sun was setting, but they didn't want to stop until they were safely tucked in their bed in their little abode. Aurora whistled her special bug com whistle, and one million flyerflies came to the riverside and 3,000 cicada, and together they played music and lit up the night so that the piggies and Aurora could work on through. Just as the first light of the sun came up, they placed the very last brick. The house was truly astonishing. It had a kitchen, a lounge, a rumpus room for games, a big bedroom with a massive bed for three little pigs, and a little turret on top for special guests like Aurora to come and stay. Let's not skimp on tradition, said Aurora. Who's for pancakes? The pigs chimed in exuberant, yes, while the bugs gratefully declined and headed off home to bed to catch up on lost sleep. Just as well whispered Aurora when they'd bid their farewells. That was going to be a lot of pancakes. Team Piggy and Aurora were just sitting down, ready to sing, Thank you for the lovely food, when they were interrupted by the doorbell. You see, the brick house was full of modern bells and whistles. Ding dong, it went. Who's there? cried Piggy Three. Who do you think? said a gruff, wolfy kind of voice. Let me guess, said Piggy One. You're collecting money for children in Africa. ha de ha ha said the wolf, not really laughing. I'm just going to start huffing. Go for it, said Pig Two. You haven't a chance. Resignation and fatigue crept into Wolf's voice. I'll blow your house down. And his huffing began. He huffed. And he puffed. He huffed. And puffed. And huffed and puffed. The pigs in Aurora looked at each other. The huffing had stopped. Instead, there was a sad, sad sobbing sound. They peered out the kitchen window to see that the wolf had collapsed on the porch and was crying, ugly crying, into his scruffy paws. <laughs> They stood and watched in disbelief for a long, awkward moment. Hey, wolf, asked Aurora. The wolf blew his nose and looked up, his eyes ribbed red from all the crying. What's going on? Aurora asked. I'm just, I'm just, just so hungry, he snivelled. And he resumed his snobathon, sobathon with great gusto. Oh, Wolfie, said Aurora, why didn't you say so? She gestured to the hot pile of steaming pancakes on the kitchen table. We've got heaps of pancakes and maple syrup, said Pig Two, and an ice cream, said Pigs One and Three together. The wolf's eyes grew wide. His frown turned upside down into the loveliest, biggest smile you could imagine. Oh, I love pancakes. Oh, I love your pancakes, he said to Aurora. She blushed. Ah, oh, so it was the smell of pancakes that had lured the wolf to their co cottage. Turns out he wasn't after the piggies at all. Oh, oh no. You see, I, I, uh, you thought I was coming to eat y you. No, oh no. 
No, I'm a vegetarian. Sure, I, I used to eat bacon, but it's pancakes I'm mad about these days. Oh, Wolfie, said Aurora, you've got terrible manners and you're, and you're not a very good communicator. You should have just said you were hungry and did we have any spare food? We always had heaps of pancakes and would happily have shared them with you. The wolf looked down at his paws bashfully. Sorry, he said in a small voice. Well, what are you waiting for? Piggy to unlocked the door and flung it open. Let's eat! Wolfie came in and sat, and the five ate the entire stack of pancakes and giggled hysterically at their huge misunderstanding. They fell about with laughter as they teased each other with impersonations as they relayed each scene from the ordeal. By the end of breakfast, they were firm friends. Wolfie's nose started to twitch. Whoa, you stink, Aurora, he said. Oh, what do you expect, said Aurora. I've been up all night building a house. And they fell about laughing again. The five sim are the firmest of friends to this day. You know, it turns out pancakes are an excellent way to make friends. Here's Aurora's pancake recipe for you to enjoy with your besties. The end.